Hello there, dynamic stars. Today we're doing something a little different. Today we're gonna to be making a bath. So I'm gonna jump right into it and I'm going to just show you regular old pot, except you gotta get a magical pot. <laughs> what do I mean? I'm being very silly. For me, this is a magical pot simply because this pot was given to me uh, by my godmother in my spiritual tradition and this pot was used by her grandmother so this pot this particular pot has been doing a lot of magical work for about 40 years now so that's why i said you need a magical pot but you can make your own magical pot uh, by beginning use and passing it down in your family so other than having a magical pot, you just fill your pot. If you're, you know, if you can get something about this size, maybe a four or five quart pot, using it only for your spiritual baths because sometimes some of the herbs that you use are not for consumption. They're just for use, topical use. So to keep yourself safe, get your own pot specifically for your baths. So fill it about halfway, as you can see, and get whatever herbs you're using. And um, open them up. So you're getting the whole deal right now. Hope you guys have been well. This is a video that I've been uh, thinking about doing for quite some time, but uh, just get into it now, because now is the right time. Pour in our bath, or herbs. And right now, as you see, I'm using some rose petal leaves, and uh, I'm going to be using chickweed, which is really, really good for many things. Uh, chickweed is a very, very hearty plant. It grows everywhere. Some people, namely farmers, call it a nuisance. Uh, it grows and it will choke out anything else. It's also given to, you know, our chickens, poultry. But given that it is so hearty, that it is so bountiful, that is one of the things that you're looking for. If you're looking for increase, if you're looking for abundance, if you're looking for perseverance, if you're looking for steadfastness, all of that is encompassed by chickweed and what it's all about. So let me show you a little bit. That is what's going on in the pot. All right, you get your handy dandy. Get it going just a little bit here. We're gonna put it on high. And we're gonna let that do what it do. All right, so literally, that is all you have to do to make a bath. You put those things together for me, I don't say my prayers until afterwards, after the bath is complete. Because at that point, now you're infusing a complete product with your energy. As I was saying, I do my prayers after the bath is complete. So you infuse your energies with a complete uh, product, with your complete bath. You can say prayers at this point in time but I would continue to say prayers afterwards. You can even further infuse your bath, of course, at the new moon, at the full moon, at other times of the lunar cycle, but the full and the new moon, of course, are quite potent, quite powerful. And you can also do some candle work uh, along with your prayers while you have your completed bath on your altar or you're in your spiritual space 
because not everybody has an altar, just an area of their house where they dedicate it to their spirits and their spiritual family. So we're going to let this do what it does, and then we'll come back, okay? Okay, I just wanted you to see it's now boiling up. We want to keep watching it. I had it on high, so give it a bit of a stir. Bring down your flame to about medium high so it doesn't boil over on you. And now that it's come to a boil, now I'm going to let it sit here and simmer down on this medium, let's just call it medium low. So you don't want it all the way low. You want it right in the middle, wherever middle is for your stove for 30 more minutes, okay? This is how I do the bass with herbs. And I used a dry herb or dry herbs for this as opposed to fresh herbs. Fresh herbs, you would want to get it to that boil and then bring it down to simmer or just a tad above simmer because you wanna like really cook and get the essence out of those fresh leaves. With the dried herbs, they're hardier, so you can boil it a little bit harder uh, and it goes just a bit faster because it's already dried. And now you're just trying to pull everything out of it that you can. Uh, so there's a slight difference. The fresh herbs is easier. And with the fresh herbs, you want to mulch it and kind of grind it to help get the essences, the juices, the oils out of them before putting them in. Okay? All right, we're gonna come back. All right now, so as you can see, we are pretty good there. This particular bath um, has the rose petals in it, like I said. So you see that nice deep red that's going there. We are about 10 minutes before the end of this uh, particular boil. This is after we've done the heavy high boil and brought it down to simmer. But you can see the herbs generally fall to the bottom and only the lightest pieces stay at the top. Okay, there. I gave it a swirl, some of them came up again. This is all normal, very normal, okay? Okay, see you in a few minutes. Okay, we are at the end of our boil. As you see, this particular bath has a bit of a foam around the edges. That's fine as well if you see that. This is the end point now. We're gonna let it cool, and then we're going to bottle it. All right. Um, I usually let it cool, add all of my other ingredients, whatever you're going to add to it, and then you can put it in a bottle. I already have a prepared glass jar. Some sort of vessel, as you can see. I'll show you more clearly when we get to that point, but now we're gonna let it cool. <laughs> I know, making bath has many little steps. All right, see you shortly. Good morning again. We're back. All right, we have finished boiling. And I'm going to show you now. It's nice and cool. All of the leaves and everything have uh, sunk to the bottom. Let me just adjust this. Okay. And I have my jar. I usually like to use a regular glass jar. And...
Wow, that was almost perfect. Pretty darn perfect. So, there are two schools of thought for what's left over. You can put some in, and I generally do. But not all of it, because it can get moldy, smelly, ferment, depending upon the herbs that are used. So I tend not to put a whole lot, but I do like some in my bath. Okay, so that's about all I'm going to put this time. And now at this point, now you can pray over your bath because it is in the vessel, it is ready for intention, and you have to decide what you're doing, what intention you're putting on. You already should know what your intention is, and that should have been in your mind as you were cooking it, as you were preparing it, as you were putting it together. So this way you're sending energies to the bath as you're doing that. So now that it's cooled, you pray. You pray and you ask the bath and you put your energies into the bath, telling it what you need, what you'd like, thanking it for its essence, thanking it for its energies, and allowing the bath, the plants, the herbs, and your spirit family to work together to bring the desired outcome. And that's it. That's how you make bath. Now, how you take the bath is entirely up to you. You can take the bath all at one time. You can use a portion of it and then dilute it with water and then pour it over yourself after a shower. Or you can use it in a little bottle, squirt it on, and just carry it with you wherever you go. It has so many uses, so many applications. So you have to decide. You can put it in your mop water. You can, you know, clean your animals, your cat, your pet. Bath is what you want it to be because in essence, it is the plants and your energy coming together to form a product, a substance that will clean you, okay? That is how to make bath. I wish you all the best. If you have any questions, please let me know. And uh, we could also do a bath, a very simple bath, not a cooked bath. And if you're interested in that, let me know that too. Bye-bye.